Recently, Colton posted a video titled Wolves in Sheep's Clothing, link below, where he discusses the predicament he faced on the r slash subreddit. If you haven't watched this video, I highly suggest that you do prior to continuing with this one. There was a great emphasis placed on sticking to the data, something I wholeheartedly agree with, as all too commonly, anecdotes and exaggerations are presented as being indicative of what is happening in the world at large. Towards the end of the video, a shift in focus is made to perceptions of MGTOW in the mainstream as well as in academia, the latter of which I've had an interest in for some time, so I figured now would be an appropriate time to initiate this conversation by presenting what's found in the research. Currently, there are not too many studies focusing expressly on the subject of MGTOW. However, over time I've compiled all the ones I can get my hands on, and they originate anywhere from a Russian journal in psychiatry to a two-year master's thesis the former of which I will focus on separately from the start, as the author's perceptions deviate a bit from that of the other studies. The deviation being in that it admits to the existence of a problem between the sexes as opposed to proposing that the blame is on men. It starts by stating that there has been a death of the gender roles and that women are imitating antisocial men. As a solution to this, avoidance is not advised, but instead a new social contract. Multiple definitions are provided, such as MGTOW and PUAs, Respectively, quote, men going their own way, a movement in the manosphere of men who are now so contact with women, is merely a reaction to the fact that women have gone their own way a long time ago, end quote. On the other side of the spectrum, you have PUAs who are defined as, quote, communities of men guided by self-imputed quote-unquote experts who purport to have found the exact sequence of buttons to push to get a woman to succumb and offer access to her body. They fail to see the irony. Like homebroken and trained puppies, they jump through hoops held high by females and adhere religiously to a script written entirely by the fairer sex. You want to sleep with me? You have to go through these motions and act clownishly for hours, end quote. The author later goes on to say that women no longer exist and that they're only narcissists. Keep in mind that MGTOW is still considered misogynistic by the study, however. An alternative take on the 80-20 rule is also brought forth and has claimed what MGTOW gets wrong is that these narcissistic women desire copulation with the 20% of beta males as, quote, women assiduously avoid the intimidating and challenging alpha men whose success and prowess constitute an unbearable narcissistic injury to the competitive, independent female, end quote. This was a study from a journal in its first issue, so I may be checking it in the future to see if further studies discussing MGTOW are generated. One thing to keep in mind regarding academic research is that multiple studies focusing on the same subject may utilize the same references. Case in point, a 2017 study titled Anti-Feminism Online, Makes How Men Going Their Own Way, providing bits of the same data across the studies. In accordance with this, and as some perceptions remain constant, I will not individuate the remaining studies. There are four main points of emphasis I believe the studies possess and are worth taking notice of. One. The significance of studying MGTOW, 2. What is MGTOW, 3. Their tendencies, and 4. Their perceptions of women. From here, a summation of the remaining studies will be covered in this order. Academics have taken interest in studying MGTOW through various platforms such as the MGTOW subreddit, forum, and YouTube content for multiple purposes. These include the perception that the red pill is misogynistic for one, hence deeming MGTOW a digital culture of misogyny. Acts they perceive as engaging in passive harassment, which may lead to science and women online, is another reason, along with the use of subjects such as evolutionary psychology as a justification for making criticisms of or abusing women. Lastly, a sense of urgency has been elicited due to MGTOW's high rate of growth as of recently. How MGTOW is defined, however, is not so straightforward and depends which study you look at. For instance, one study predominantly focusing on the subreddit took into account posts by users such as that of VTSOBNF, which states, quote, MGTOW is a poorly defined philosophy with a few different factions trying to push their agendas, end quote. This user makes the example that, on the one hand, those termed anti-gynocentrists will claim a MGTOW is someone who avoids marriage. On the other, you may have those who have gone monk and will claim that MGTOW avoid relationships in general. This perception is reflected in another study as a contentious topic that is a ramification of MGTOW primarily focusing on what they're not doing, such as not engaging in marriage, which results in an inability to define what a real MGTOW is. Three YouTube content creators were mentioned, specifically Sandman, Barbarossa, and Stardusk. 
as providing messages of a more radical nature that, quote, resembles an anarcho-masculinist movement, using the internet as an expansionist tool for MGTOW agenda, and for plotting against quote-unquote gynocentric forces, end quote. Although it seems all authors would agree that MGTOW is a misogynistic as well as anti-feminist group, there is a bit more nuance across the studies. It has been defined as a growing hate group consisting predominantly of middle and upper class white men, which allows them the opportunity to deviate from traditional norms and possess a perception of inequality that is flawed. MGTOW has also been defined as a group within the manosphere that focuses on self-improvement and preservation, traits separating them from MRAs as they don't intend to try and change things. What's also mentioned is their support for leaving women behind, feminist Western society, and the gynocentric order as it is not possible to change them. Moreover, that these men feel betrayed, and that men on the whole have essentially shot themselves in the foot by generating technologies resulting in selfie culture that facilitate female narcissism. Tendencies observed amongst MGTOW also vary across the studies, the sharing of deviant narratives being a common one such as that of anti-feminism, but also the venting of irritation, anger, and rage. Validation is also mentioned in relation to those men who stray from traditional norms, such as getting married. This validation will be received via posts in places such as the MGTOW subreddit, which has been perceived as an action for expressing gender. That is to say, these posts serve to signal masculinity to other MGTOW. Posts rejecting women and gynocentrism function in a similar way as a performance. As the focus is on what MGTOW are not doing, these performances of rejection serve to exhibit being red pilled and part of the community while simultaneously emphasizing the necessity of the group and its ideology. By dint of the nature of these performances being specifically for other MGTOW, this is thought to explain why acts of harassment are passive, an example being misogynistic acts of harassment on Twitter through posts which may possess the ability to normalize attitudes of sexism. Posts, as have been documented through observations of the MGTOW forum, are mostly monologic in form, it is also noted that claims are backed by evidence only 26% of the time, however, sources are utilized only 10% of the time, anecdotes coming in at 5%, and personal experiences at 12%. What is common amongst these posts is a theme of bad experiences involving women, which comes off as a paradox in that MGTOW claim to want to go their own way. Further examples of posts include referencing women's sexual history, intelligence, and political stance, which are presented to be misinformed and these acts are perceived in some literature as a way to threaten women as to ensure male dominance on the internet. In another study, quote, The analysis demonstrates that while the misogyny and violence produced by MGTOW is not extreme in nature, their appeals to rational thinking make it seem like common sense, end quote. The perception is that men in the manosphere believe they are victims and as such resort to generating conspiracy theories regarding feminism and women as a justification for misogyny. This, in some cases, is accomplished by evolutionary psychology being appropriated and the resulting theories are defined as follows, quote, These evolutionary biological concepts have been heavily masculinized and geekified to give rise to a uniquely misogynistic, heterosexist, and racist lexicon, end quote. The author goes on to provide terms such as cuck, negging, friendzone, and shit-testing. Another comment worth noting is that these theories regarding female nature are largely perceived as pseudoscientific due to a lack of references or citations. Policing by MGTOW being another tendency is reported to enforce certain aspects of traditional masculinity while simultaneously rejecting as well as emasculating those who do not abide by those boundaries. The act of othering was the final tendency of focus. While MGTOW consider themselves to be regular people, men such as MRAs may be perceived as betas, Moreover, this broad perception of being normal men who have faced some form of adversity is noted to potentially contribute to the growth of MGTOW. Moving on to perceptions of women, MGTOW go their own way as they perceive female nature to be manipulative and psychopathic with an inclination to utilize men as tools. They are also thought of as liars, sluts, and perceive femininity to be a threat. Naturally, they do not care about men and will prioritize alphas although they will settle for a beta as they are easy to exploit. They are also compared to children due to factors such as emotionality, which is thought to hinder their ability to be logical. With regard to social media use, notions such as objectification are utilized by women in attempts to play the victim, all the while posting selfies of a sexual nature to garner male attention. 
Ultimately, MGTOW believed that feminism played a pivotal role in perpetuating a false narrative of female victimhood and that women actually have the upper hand. This concludes what I got from the research and is meant to serve in initiating a broader conversation. Thank you for listening, a shout out to my patrons, and if you got something out of this content, please like, share, comment, subscribe, consider donating and becoming a patron, and as always, here's to the research and take care.